Welcome! It's the third place decider, everybody! The Fish Cup, our Korean tournament, is playing out today. We have the last two matches coming up, two best of fives, the third place decider, and the grand final. Now, again, for everybody that tuned in a bit late, so if you're not familiar with the team names, uh, don't get worried about that, because they went for a captain's draft mode for the tournament, trying to mix things up a little bit, emulating what we did in Europe roughly a year ago, when we went for a few captain's draft tournaments to just shake things up. The logic behind it pretty much simply being you uh, mix things up and at the same time you make the tournament a little bit more interesting because normally when you have teams that are established sign up you're always from the beginning already know who are the favorites are and of course the level of play is going to be a bit higher that way but what they did here is they took the top 40 players of korea and then used them in a player pool and teams started drafting from that pool so we have mixed teams from uh, several established ones and the korean players so far have put up quite the show the semi-finals were insane single elimination sy system that's how we ended up in this third place decider team cat is going up against the aging curve today and Vala, our girl is just not going to see any play. I don't know what to tell you guys, but she's been banned over and over and over again. And with the impact that Lunara had in the semifinals, it is not really a big shock that she's now getting banned too. So no Lunara in game number one at least. Battlefield of Eternity is our map, and they are really going ham on the damage dealers. Damn. We got Vala, Tigers, Lunara, and Junkrat all banned out. But well, let's see what we're going to get out of the first pick. Well, Fury and Stukov are usually huge candidates with high priority. But first pick on Battlefield of Eternity, we might see them deviate a bit away from that pattern. I still would expect both, maybe one of them, taken very, very uh, early. And yeah, there it is already. So Stukov gets locked in immediately. There's the Malfurion pick. I mean, again, I told you, they really want those two. When it comes to S-tier heroes in general, not even looking at roles, those two just dominate and have dominated for a long time now in the Korean meta. And obviously, they are also very valued when you look over to Europe, but it's not that much of a priority that you would forego every single time your first pick to get one of the two supports here. Now, in addition to that, we get Blaze, and Battlefield of Eternity obviously also great, and you uh, start stacking your first stun. Yeah, and talking about stuns, we get Dibbles in. So Diablo and Hanzo, potential for a few combos, but we've seen a lot more Lightning Breath than Apocalypse. Of course. And yeah, on top of that, what are we getting uh, on the bans now? Because side laners are still there. I suppose we could see a side laner ban. Blaze is already chosen, so maybe just ban out something. In the old days, it would have been Urel that gets a ban here, but nowadays, Dehaka has a much higher priority. We've seen him also make a comeback on Battlefield of Eternity. First, he was played on the bigger maps that value his global even further, or even more. But now in Battlefield, we have seen him a few times too. And that is actually very reminiscent of what we had in uh, the early days of HGC, and even before that. Like, the logic oftentimes with Dehaka on the map was to get level 10 during the first objective, or sorry, during the second objective, and then move into the fight and immediately start using that heroic ability to get an advantage, get the second immortal and snowball that a bit. But these days, of course, he is quite he has a lot of survivability, he has also the drag, the isolation, there's a lot of good things to him. But well, as you can see, we get Grey May now once again. And May together with that. So we got the slows from Blaze, Roots from Alfieri, and May with her own slows here. There's a lot of CC that they have to slow things down and help Greymane to get into a good position to maybe rip Stukov apart, get onto Hanzo, try and take him out. Diablo, of course, is going to be hit by that bullet quite a bit. And that could really threaten him. Now, we have obviously a lot of former HTC players in here, and again, top 40 of Korea. We had some new faces also emerge, which was pretty transparent in the last Korean tournament that we commentated, as also on the channel. But here comes Li Ming and Hoga. So Hanzo and Li Ming, both for the poke against the Immortals. Actually, a pretty dangerous setup for a Team Cat to go up against, because you have a lot of poke from distance. Hanzo can murder the Immortal very, very quickly. And, yep, it's not too bad. But well, there's the Zarya pick, and I'm a little bit sad that they didn't go for Garrosh. I was talking about Zarya as a potential pick just yesterday, but more so in combination with Garrosh, which we're not seeing here either. But I like that we at least get Zarya. That puts Greyman, of course, in a very protected space. But with that, we have Battlefield of Eternity coming up, so let's go, ladies. First map in the best of five, the third place decider tournament in the Fish Cup, our Korean tournament at hand. 
Game number one, Team Cat against the Aging Curve. And on the left side, we got Hero on Zarya, Apion on May, Vast on Blaze, Red Pepper on Malfurion, and Panda Gom is playing Greymane. On the right side of the map, it is the red team with Dren on Hogger. We got Praise the Sun on Hanzo, Brother on Diablo, Academy on Stukov, and Arian Rod is playing Li Ming in our first game of the day. The four man already headed towards the bot lane. And actually they're going there with the entire five man. Maybe hoping for a sneaky kill before the rotation towards the top side is undertaken by the off laner. We'll see. But yeah, for now we got our four man established. And Hogger is not really wasting any time there. And is rotating towards the, st uh, the top instead. Alright. So <laughs> Spray game is on point for sure. The root of Malfurion is as well as you can see. Praise the Sun gets immediately locked in by that for just a moment. And boy, are they pushing them back. Yeah, having Zarya in this composition makes him, of course, a lot tankier, a lot of sustain, and they can start attacking some of those structures from the get-go. Now, they need to be careful that Diablo doesn't get a uh, hold of them and pushes them into the towers. That would be a bit of an issue. But so far, they are really using Zarya well here. Hero, in this case, went for the Feel the Heat on level 1. So they're going for the big brrrr and trying to just simply burn everything down. And they already started with the sidewall, which exposes the fountain, of course, completely. I mean, even the tower is halfway gone. So this is starting to become a quick problem for the aging curve as they are losing infrastructure. We're only a minute, not even a minute and a half into the game. And things are starting to get pretty annoying, at least, for the aging curve. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to lose the game here, but this is a lot of pressure that they're facing. And you can imagine how much worse it would get in this situation if they would now also lose a hero, for example. Now, it's going to be a fight over the camp if they decide that they want to go for it. And they're trying to go for the back here. Diablo already looking to provide a bit of vision, but they're not moving in for it, even with the silence. As long as Zarya is getting shielded, she's fine. And that's a camp. And if Hero just taps the fountain and gets some heals here, they might be able to escort that camp towards the front and drop it right away. So this is getting a bit dangerous here, I'm not going to lie. Aging Curve, even before the first Immortal is there, might lose the wall. And if they also can drop the fountain, then the sustain on lane is going to be incredibly tricky for the red team. So off to a very good start for Team Cat. Now, once the Immortal phase starts up, it's going to be announced in 10 seconds, and of, of course, things might change. But at least for the time being, there <laughs> is just one team that is dictating the pace of the game, and one that is reacting to what's happening. And I mean, just look at this. The entire wall is gone, and now there's an opportunity to just go straight away for the fountain. And yep, they're using it. Bzzz, and gone. Even if Zarya or Mei would get killed, it would be totally worth it what they just pulled off here. And of course with Mei, she just simply moves away. The team has already moved over to the camp. Greyman is doing exactly what he's supposed to and rips it apart. And that is such a fantastic start for Team Cat. Now, the Immortal is now coming through, so we'll see which team is able to get the first one. But this is a great opening for the blue team as Aging Curve is attempting to fight back by killing a target. But as they are flanking in from the side in an attempt to drop at least Hero, they're not able to pull that off either. And Greyman is already up at the top together with Blaze and is starting to take the Immortal down. So that's a halftime show that they already won without even having to put up a fight, honestly. The only one that was trying to delay them a little bit was Hogger and he did not stand a chance against the two of them, of course. So if it comes to a race now, there is just no way. I mean, if they're lucky, they can get down to 50%, maybe a little bit more with the help of Hanzo, but you can already see where this is headed. This is not only the first wall that has been destroyed by Team Cat, but they also lock in Immortal number one. And that is uh, such a strong start into the game. If they are able to take, let's say, the top four, maybe not even the four. <laughs> I mean, even here, the wall is already halfway gone. Just showcasing how much Blaze and later on... Grey man, when he started a system, were able to do. And before the Immortal arrives on the scene, they are going through nearly everything. As such a good shot at the fort, it's incredible. Yeah, that composition is doing so much work for Team Cat. And you can see how Aging Curve is struggling to get a foothold in this game. Level 7 talents are in, but the red team is, of course, locking the next talent in as well. We haven't seen a single kill yet. 
but structures are getting ripped apart here. And our one-on-one -on -one between Hogger and Blaze at the bottom of the map is obviously heavily in favor of Blaze now because there's no fountain for Hogger. So Blaze can tap a fountain, he has his own self-sustain too. I mean, they're pushing this over towards the keep wall already and might even be able to take one of the towers down. Eh, not quite, but they got close. Diablo over the engage attempt, but yeah, I don't think they can do anything here, honestly. With May protecting the front and Zarya helping out too, the two squishies in the back are looking pretty solid. Malfurion, the only problem that he has is that he's starting to run out of mana. But yeah, really good. Really good situation now for Team Cat. I mean, they're pulling slightly ahead in experience, not by too much though. Ooh, and yeah, that didn't work out too well for them either. So a little bit unfortunate. So the rotation from the top is now kicking in. But of course, the infrastructure position on the map has now turned pretty bad pretty quickly for Aging Curve. They don't have a fountain anymore on the, the front line. The top four has been eliminated too, so the sustain down here is also a problem. And with another camp about to be taken, Team Cat could decide to push in with five and go for the fort, especially since they have catapults and a camp now pushing through the top lane, and that forces Hogga topside. Now, Blaze is meeting that rotation, but the four versus four at the bottom of the map is still going to become a problem. And this just shows also how powerful this entire lineup here is. We've seen very quick cam captures. Greymane is fantastic for that. I mean, he excels at cam capture. He excels at the Immortals. He's really good also threatening uh, Diablo once he has his level 10. And with Zarya assisting him with a shield, he can go much more aggressive and deeper than he normally would be able to. So currently we have 14,000 damage through Feel the Heat for Zarya. Greymin is sitting at 11,000. Hanzo is looking at a solid 15, 18,000 right now, 19,000. Li Ming at 15,000 damage. But all that damage doesn't really accumulate to anything if they can't get kills. And it's really tricky for them to get that done. And of course, Greymin is already exactly where he needs to be. He's, he's immediately on the point. And I can tell you one thing. Team Cat is looking at this and they're saying, guys, if you don't want to fight, we are happy to go for these structural attacks time and time again. Because in the long run, that's going to win us the game. I mean, look at the immortal damage now. With Greymane in there and Feel the Heat, they are looking at an insane spot. And Greymane actually didn't even go for the bullet. They're not threatening Diablo at the front. He's not trying to poke him down. He literally just wants to go for Hanzo with go for the throat and see if he can get a kill in against Li Ming. And that again highlights how deep he can go once he has a Zarya shield. Normally he would try to stay a little bit safe and poke from a distance, but he has a different story. Arrow comes out, only hitting Blaze. Bunker is up already. The Immortal is low. Ogre comes in, and there's a Lightning Breath. They might get the kill on Blaze, and indeed they do, but I don't think that they can save their Immortal. It's so low already. Eventually should be taken, unless we see more kills now coming in. Once that we have an attack up here at the top, some players will sneak over and try and take it down. Especially since there's a camp at the bot lane that somebody has to deal with. And it is, in this case, Hogger. So here comes the poke again. Slide against Diablo. It's a five man on the map once more. Immortal gets taken. More than a 50% shield already. And now they're even trying to go for the attack up here. There's a couple of globes that he... Oh! Here's the wall, baby! Where's the follow-up? Can they get a kill in, maybe? Hogger is spinning, goes for the spin to win here. But everybody is just moving back once again. In the meantime, the fort at the bot lane has fallen and the Immortal is already underway. If they can kill Hogger, oh my god! That is the first kill they got in the game and the timing couldn't be any better. Hogga is down just as the Immortal arrives at the wall. Blaze is topside, so it is a 4 versus 4 battle at the bottom of the map. But yeah, this is really a great position for the blue team to maybe even take the keep. They find themselves in such a great spot now. Hogga is back in another second, but Blaze is now also moving back down. The Immortal is still very early, of course, so it's not really scaling too well. They went to the wall. I'm not sure if they can get the keep. They need to get kills for that. Short distance arrow. Hero still in a bit of trouble. Can they get a kill? Yes, they do. Zarya is gone. The Immortal with even more damage on the key, but not able to put the final few hits in. The rest of the team is trying to escape here, but Greymane going for the throat and taking Li Ming down. Damage dealer gone. Hogger also in a bit of trouble as he's starting to move back. And yep, that is two kills to two. Level three is now ready as well. And with that, 
we are looking pretty... I mean, we're looking at a pretty good game for the blue team, obviously. We've talked about this a lot. But maybe with a few more kills, the red team can start a comeback here. Now, they need to make sure that they're locking kills in so that they can use the uh, numbers advantage on the map in order to bring this back a little bit. And we'll see if they can pull it off. Because the pressure is surreal right now. It is incredible. So, currently, what we're seeing is level 13 talents. And with that, we now have, for example, a pain is temporary. Glorious forever, exactly. And down at the bottom of the map, yeah, they try to get level 13. They try to get the experience. And they're going to lock this one in soon. But of course, it gives a bit of freedom to the blue team top side, which they use to get another camp. More pressure. And it's just Zarya. Zarya here allows them to just siege up. And to be fair, they have also Mei and Blaze. So this is a very tanky lineup that is incredibly difficult to kill. You have to CC them. Arrow fully missing here, by the way. Hogger also spinning back with the Horda pulled. But there's the kill on Diablo. He's going to be back to business. But the problem is that maybe Hogger is going to die here too. They're all going through the choke point. The oil is there. And May is slowing them down even further. And Hogger, oh my god. He pokes his way out of the fight just in time to survive here. Another hit or two and he would have died as well. Now Diablo is of course back. He was fully stacked on his souls, but he's now low in HP. We have on 13 uh, the virulent reaction, but they are going immediately for the immortal. If Dibbles pokes his head out too much and they can focus him down, then that would of course be real bad. But he's making the engage. Ah, nice move back out by May though. They got some initial damage in and now May moving out. Hoga again trying to block their path a bit. But yep, this is getting more and more tricky for the aging curve. They need kills now. They can't afford to lose another immortal. Greyman has by now also overtaken everybody else in the damage numbers with the uh, on the blue team side at least. 32,000 damage for him. Zarya is of course still chipping in a lot of damage herself with the 28,000 we're seeing on her. 43k for Li Ming. But again, the numbers don't matter if you can't get the kills. And now they are the ones in trouble. And there it is. Hanzo down. The ice wall doesn't connect here. But another move for Diablo as he's also getting attacked. And of course, body blocked into oblivion. No chance for him to stay alive. He's going to die eventually. And that is another staggered death right here. So Dibbles is down. Hanzo is dead. They have a one and a half level lead over the aging curve. And are making their way towards the Immortal again. Dropping the halftime show. And boy, I mean, this is... This is getting real nasty. It doesn't feel like the aging curve has a chance here. The draft just doesn't work out for them. They have real trouble getting kills. And the entire siege setup through May and Zarya in particular. But also helped out by Blaze in big team fights, Is just proving to be too much for them. So now we have the Shaman camp also aggroed and attacked as the Immortal is still preparing for the rotation towards the top. Yeah, down at the bottom of the map. Okay, that is going to be a bit unfortunate. Oh, but he is alive. <laughs> May is alive. They were able to save her. And now they lock down Diablo in an attempt to take the front line apart once again. Good arrow, but he gets cleansed out by Malfurion with a nature's cure. But at least Diablo didn't die. It doesn't change the fact that the Immortal is already moving towards the keep and everybody else is down brawling at the bottom of the map. A kill against Togger is making matters worse. And now both of the keeps are in danger of getting eliminated. The one at the bot lane is going to fall 100%. And well, let's just say that the one at the top lane isn't looking too healthy. So this could easily be two keeps destroyed. And they're going for the core, of course. This will force them back too. They're trying to save their key. But in the meantime, the shield on the core is getting demolished. So the keep is falling 100% as they have to retreat to try and save the game. And I'm not even sure if they can pull that off. Even that is going to be a tall order. The shield is already gone. The immortal has been destroyed. But they have no keep standing. Fountains are getting crushed. And this is just a nightmare for AG Curve. Game number one. Fantastic coordination from Team Cat. A draft that works wonders for them here. And they are looking for kills. They're going for Li Ming and she's dead. Li Ming is down. The core at 66% already. And Zarya just goes brrrr and drops everybody. The 
Spray game on point still. The shield is slowly building up again, but Greymane wants to go for another kill and he takes the flea back down. Zarya at least is dead. Maybe they have a chance to save the day for now, but considering that the catapult is now also focusing onto the core, I don't think there's a way for them. Catapult gets another shot off. 50% on the core and with three down unless Li Ming pops off one shit she comes back into the game There is just no way for them to save it here since Dukov dies too There is very little sustain and that ladies and gentlemen is game number one There's no doubt about it any longer team cat is gonna take the lead in this third place deciders match of the tournament They take the 1-0 they win battlefield of eternity and put even more pressure on team aging curve before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Kalda TV. Well, game number two, Tomb of the Spider Queen is our map and so far Team Cat is looking very strong here. Great draft for them on the first map and you could see that Team Aging Curve, they just didn't have any kind of solution to that Zarya, to that heavy front line. Supported by Zarya with Mei and Blaze, that team just rolled over them. They struggled from the beginning to keep their structures alive. The walls were broken before the first Immortal even spawned on the map. So it was an incredibly well drafted and a nicely executed strategy by Team Cat as they are trying to lock in third place in the tournament. And on, of course, now a team aging curve in an attempt to bring it back. Yeah, Vala, again, when it comes to the Korean meta and the way that they're valuing heroes in their mind, Vala is absolutely broken right now. So they ban her out every time. I think this is now map 11 or so that we cast in the tournament. And every single time she was banned immediately. We haven't seen her a single time go through the first bans. So yeah, they really, really, really don't want to give Vala over to everyone. And here come the support bans. So again, those two are super high up in the Korean meta. Normally they make it at least through the bans, but in this case, both of them were banned out here. Jungred, because of his incredible poke and interrupt potential on Tube and Spider Queen, is also getting banned. Now the hero offers, of course, a lot more. The combos with the stun into a mine, pushing the target back is great wherever you play. But those bombs are just, or those grenades are super annoying when you're playing on Tube in particular. Tigers as in an early lock and we get Lucio plus Tehaka and you know this is a rotation that you wouldn't really see in Europe So you might end up with very similar drafts at the end of the day But just seeing the switches and priorities in the Korean meta and how they value certain heroes is kind of fun And I want to say that lately we had so much variety in picks now Not only did we have a Korean Chinese tournament where the Chinese meta was also coming through But then all the European cups that we have now at the same time meta madness came through now another Korean tournament So it's actually really cool to see how much is happening in Heroes of the Storm right now and guys, of course, if you watch this on YouTube and you want to support the efforts and all the coverage here, there is the uh, uh, member feature that has been activated on YouTube, so you can always do that. But even just liking the video will, of course, help. So make sure that you check that out. Deckard Kane picked really early here. Also a lot of uh, slows that we're going to get through him. And Leo on top of that. Now they've been specking very heavily into Ghastly Reach, whereas in Europe you might see that, but on level 4 after the two patches ago, one patch ago, after the changes, we now still see Neil Peasants taken in the European side. Dibbles also banned the last game, and here's the Garrosh ban. I'm still waiting for, Sp for race car Garrosh. I'm happy that we finally got Azaria, and the strategy was of course insanely good. But Garrosh Zarya is just kind of fun because it is terrifying to have that speed bubble on Zarya, putting on a Garrosh, and then the other team is just looking at us like, holy hell, he's going to flip us over, isn't he? But yeah. Now, let's head straight into our second draft setup here. Maev and May are locked in. Yeah, they really like May at the front line. And Maev with all the tethers plus the Haka with a follow up Tong. There's a lot of CC here. I mean, they are stacking some crazy CC in those last few games. But yeah, good for them. And again, what are we getting at the front line now for uh, the aging curve? Yesterday we had a lot of Johanna too. So in the semifinals, Johanna was played quite a bit on Tomb. You could definitely use her. But they go for Muradin and we got Bambi. Bambi is in. Lulnara gets picked. And Lucio will have to deal with that. 
Whereas Hero is likely to lock in a damage dealer because so far they are heavily melee. They need someone that can poke from a distance. Who is it going to be though? I mean, technically you could also still go in a couple of mages, but there's plenty of auto attackers left as well. But yep, last pick for them. We get an assassin here and it is Hanzo on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Honor! Alright, let's go. Game number two, best of five series everybody. We have Tomb of the Spider Queen coming up now. The second a game between Team Cat and Aging Curve. Second game of the series, Team Cat against Aging Curve, and my F gets played by Pandagom on the blue team's side. We got Red Pepper on Lucio, Vasto on Dehaka, Arpian on May, and Hero is playing Hanzo in game number two. Praise the Sun on the right side of the map, plays Lunara. We got a Brother on Murden, Arian Rod on Tychus, Academy on Deckard Kane, and Dren on Leoric. And Tychus, yesterday was interesting because we had a little bit of a break since he had to leave and go from an internet cafe, from a PC bunk, over to his house. It's actually quite interesting. I mean, again, I lived for three years in Korea and I have never seen a country where internet cafes are such an established part of culture as they are in Korea. I mean, a lot of that is also because nine million people live in Seoul and Korea in general is very very centralized around what's happening in Seoul, obviously. I guess if we're talking about countries, at least within Europe, that have internet cafes and where that culture is maybe a little bit present, I would probably name Sweden. But even there, it is just no comparison to what's going on in Korea. So uh, it's always funny to me when, you know, you see like Korean players that need to, just a quick break to uh, go home because they're like, hey, internet cafe is closing. Uh, now with the times of COVID, there's apparently still curfews over there. But for now, it seems like May is going to die here. We already had some trouble on Tigers for just a moment, but May is in real trouble. The body blocks on the other side and all the space that is created to keep our appearance alive are very cool here. So nicely done. They protect the frontliner and make that happen. So good stuff. But yeah, I still remember the days when uh, when I was in Korea and you went go went out clubbing and then uh, in the morning uh, when you wanted to go home, a lot of the subways wouldn't drive yet. So you would just go to an internet cafe at like 4, 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, play for like an hour or two and then head home with the subway. So <laughs> good times back then. But yeah, that's definitely one of the parts uh, that I miss when it comes to Korean uh, life and just convenience. But anyways, as we are now in our game, uh, at this time of the day, everything is fine over there. And so I suppose that he's back at the Internet Cafe where the yeah, the connection... Well, the connection isn't really a problem no matter where you are in Korea. Even back in the day, they had an easy thousand up and down. And <laughs> there were a lot of politicians that said, we need to improve on the speed. Germany to the day doesn't have that shit, so yeah, it's actually crazy. Like, even in the US where I lived, it was really tricky to get that. Some regions had fiber, but a lot of them didn't. So yeah, the connection is not a problem no matter where you live in Korea, but of course some people don't have the desktop set up at home that lends itself to playing these games, especially since a lot of them are just going to uh, an Indercut fake instead. But all of that set aside, let's focus on the game. We got our level 4 our Master Assassin locked in again. In addition to that, the Lurker Strain for the Haka. Murden, as you can see, is now going into the second clap. So we will likely see him with the Healing Static Synergy on level 13 once more. And they got Kane, the old geezer, going for Ruby. A paralyzing Rage for Leoric. As he has his level 4 locked in. So yeah, no Neil Peasants shenanigans anymore. It's all about either Ghastly Reach or the extra slows that we're going to get from him. So yeah, good stuff. And by now, what else are we seeing? Nothing crazy happening on the turn ins either. We have a slight advantage on uh, gems for the red team. Not a single kill yet, but Brother is already getting aggressive. Muradin hopping around here. Or getting tossed by someone. I mean, the talent is literally called Dwarf Toss, but who tosses Muradin? Those are the questions that nobody can answer. The questions that Blizzard doesn't like us to ask, and they don't have a solution to that. Yeah, because I gotta tell you, I have not seen anybody tossing Muradin just yet, but he gets tossed all the time. Where's Aragon when you need it? Is there a mini pocket Aragon that he has that eventually just like jumps out and tosses him around? We don't know. And Blizzard doesn't like us to ask those questions. So yeah, it is... It's a conspiracy for sure. But anyways, there's a quest completed for Hanzo as he's still poking them out. And they're getting a lot of damage in the backline too. Praise the Sun on Bambi is having some problems as well. 
So now we have a lot more space in the middle of the map for Team Cat to turn in their gems. They don't have enough for a full turn in yet. Academy is the only one trying to interrupt here. But, yep, in comes Tychus. Alright. Yeah, level 7 talents already. Got now the never outmatched. And instead of the choking pollen, we get the splintered spear. So even a bit more AoE now for Praise the Sun. And Lunara is of course going to stack all that AoE damage. But yep, there we go. Once she gets her leap in, those are the tricky situations. Because Lucio is not really the most hit point heavy hero. So if she's able to slow him down a little bit and get close enough, then he might have troubles after level 10 and heroic abilities. Both teams now with enough gems for a turn in. Down here, the Lurker Strain is currently saving Dehaka. Yeah, and Muradin on the ducky still at the front here. Yeah, good Muradin Stormbolt would of course be great now. A few more slows and a deck at Kane follow up. But there's a tether, and that's at least one kill. Make it a double, baby. My F, she's crushing them. Brother is trying to jump out, gets tethered back in. 33 gems for him. 33. Deck at Kane is trying to keep him alive. Is managing to do so for now, but there's the lock, and he dies. Oh, they try to go for Deck at Kane, and they kill all of them. The gems. Gems are lost and they get four kills. They dove deep to ensure that the gems are not making it. And just look at Hanzo, that sneaky bastard is coming in from the side with his hipster beard and his bow and takes down the fountain as well. Oh boy, that escalated very quickly. Four kills to zero, one level lead. We have level 10 coming up. The web weavers are coming in. The gems have been lost. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Team Cat just jumped ahead by a light year. Five second pause for all the nitpickers to tell me that light years are not measuring distance, and then we can continue. And I bet by the time that they hear that sentence, half of them have already written a comment about it. So either way, we got now four... Wait, what, what did I say? No, I... <laughs> I actually messed it up. <laughs> oh, I think I just messed it up myself. All right, that was a sell. That was that was an own goal right there. <laughs> I can't even remember what I said, but I think I screwed it up just now. <laughs> oh boy, the cast curse is real. I need more coffee, guys. I really need more coffee. All right, ah, there's the avalanche. Look at the snowball, baby. And there's the hit. Yeah, when you're trying to take the piss out of people, and then the only thing that you do is own yourself. Great place, great place. Oh, boy. Uh, might have confused a couple of people at least, so yeah, I call it a win after all. Uh, some people might say that I'm lying to myself a bit, and yeah, that's definitely true. Now, anyways, we got the containment disc in. Blizzard thought that it would be a great idea to buff that talent even further. I mean, putting a silence on it too was maybe a little bit unnecessary, but yep, there we have it. And here comes the second turn in. I mean, that was the first fort that fell. They opened some walls up. They have turn in number two now. And of course, they have the gem count to make that work. And it's Panagom who's going to deliver and finalize that. At least we have level 10 on both sides. And that gives us the leap right here with a leaping strike. So Lulnara is going to be ready for a rock and roll. But all right. We got our camp taken, so there's even more pressure through the middle of the map. Five kills to zero, also tell you the tale of the team fights so far. To be fair, one of those kills came more or less only through uh, the... Uh, oh, they're going for the bot lane here. Going for the Haka. Yeah, one of the... Like, four of those kills came through in just one single battle and fight that they absolutely dominated. So we'll see if they can also be dominant in the upcoming team fights. Especially down here at the bottom of the map, as they have apparently chosen to focus on this one. They can take Leo down, that would be neat too, because he holds the gems. Let's see if Aging Curve can maybe defend here. Now they're doing a good job against at least the Web Weaver, but Brother's a little bit far out and needs to be very careful. Hero is poking with his Hanzo time and time again. I mean, now we got him on 33,000 damage, Lunara on the 25. And this fort is very much exposed. And they had to go into the middle to stop the camp and the web weavers were already putting pressure on the keep itself. So down here, the defense is not well set up. But we have even at the top now, Mayev trying to take another minion wave down. 
claiming the gems and also getting a bit more damage on the fort itself as the rotation is starting to head that way. But May gets caught at least a little bit. There's the containment disc. That might be a kill. Odin and Tomb. And the sound barrier from Lucio to stop the fight at least for now. But May, the maze to the face as Leo is dropping her with a final hit. Nobody dying on the red team side. They got their first kill in and they're working on number two. But the Haka... He's dead. He's dead. He is 100% dead. And the repositioning puts Praise the Sun also a little bit farther to front. Nearly endangering them again. Turn in is coming. So, there we go. And... Yep, there's another Storm Bolt. And maybe Lucio overstepped slightly here. Thought himself a little bit too cool for school, but is able to survive, I suppose. Yeah, Lunara is not able to do anything about it. It is already heading back. Bot lane fort is about to fall. And they also took the Siege Giants, which means that the Web Weavers that the red team just summoned are going to have some trouble at the bottom of the map. Exactly. So, top side, the Web Weavers are on the way. Top side, we got 13 versus 13 now. This should be an e Well, maybe not much of an easy defense since Praise the Sun is now moving in. By the way, on 13, we got the super healing potions. Yeah, those were always the best. Two stacks only on the Master Assassin. But obviously, you take it for the passive, not for the stacking. If you can do both, it's great, but yeah, priorities. You're gonna take that one down too. There's the Lulnado. That one didn't do a whole lot, did it now? Yeah, nope. so uh, I thought so too. Five kills to two. And, of course, with the Web Weavers already taken apart, Team Aging Curve, they should probably focus on one of the side lanes and try to apply the pressure right there to finally get a fourth. They already lost two, and the top one isn't looking great uh, either. So, by now, we got the healing stack gave for Muradin. Yeah, they really like that old-school setup. Europe is playing with both of these builds, but it's the, le uh, the less popular one right now. But, obviously, if you're planning on heading into these team fights and going deep, then uh, this combo between the level 4 and level 30 in Thailand can still give you a lot of power. Dehaka coming in. Trying to hit that isolation, but the fight moves away from him. Here comes the move on to my F. Sound barrier is in. Containment disc also connected. He goes for the drag. They try the kill. Leo is low. 35 gems in his hands, but Deckard Kane keeps him alive. Tycho's then again. He is dead. Gets completely pushed back by the blue team. And they gank up on him and drop him easily. Now another attempt to go for Leo. And, I mean, Leoric is really playing a dangerous game here. If he falls, then they have a big problem. So, for now, no level 16 yet. But, of course, the blue team is inching closer and closer to it. Yep. Big wave also up at the top that could eventually start to threaten the fort, if not taken care of. We have 45,000 damage for Lunara now. And 54,000 for Hanzo. Seems like they're going to go for a few more camps here. Same as obviously uh, being executed on the right side of the map. And in addition to all of this, we have level 16 talents available on the side of the blue team. So they have now the upper hand on the turn-ins. And can control that spot a little bit better. Storm bolts are still connecting here. But I would be very surprised if Aging Curve is really contesting this. Leo is also at the top and is taking care of all of the wave clay here. More gems for him. So obviously there's not a serious battle happening down there. But Brother is still delaying them. He tries to get the team to level 16. He tries to buy some time. There's the Avalanche. They're trying to force the battle. And he's nearly insta-killed. They're still trying to save Tychus. He's low, but he is able to get out. That was a clutch call by them, though. Nice job saving Tychus. But they should still be able to get that turn in. Or maybe not. I mean, right now, if you look at the experience, it's only a tiny, tiny advantage for Team Cap before uh, the level 16 uh, gets taken. So 18, can they deliver the rest? Uh, they're, they're currently trying. RPN is already on it. And Padnagom needs to turn in as well if they want to deliver. Down here, Hanzo jumps away. And yeah, they zone them out enough to allow the turn in to happen. Another Web Weaver wave. Six kills to two now in total, so the lead is still there, but it's a 16 versus 16 battle that's going to come up next since Team Aging Curve has locked in their talents as well. The Dwarf launch. So whoever tosses Muradin has apparently gone to the gym a little bit and is launching him even further now. Yeah, we still need to figure out who that is. Like, my personal theory is Pocket Aragon, but might be someone else. I mean, who fits into Muradin's pocket? Like, what is that? Isn't there like a Disney flea or something like that that is insanely strong? 
Wasn't there something like that like a while ago? So yeah, I, I don't really know. But yeah, whoever whoever tosses Mirrod in, he has definitely worked out. He has done. He has gone to the gym. He has worked out, and he is just beasting it right now. There's again the containment disc. They try to go for our boy, but the little NATO to counteract any kind of aggression that the blue team could throw against them. So Tychus is safe, but we have bot lane. A lot of damage done by the Harker and the wave that he's been escorting in. So now all three lanes are heavily threatened by Team Cat, and they are just doing such a great job in this series so far. First game was, of course, an incredible performance by them. But even on the second one, they are dominating. The arrow comes in. They go for Tychus once again. And this time he's down. This time he's dead. Lulnado doing some work. But the five man is focusing the bot lane now. In the hopes of taking down this keep. With Tychus gone, a lot of their damage isn't there anymore. They go for Lulnara maybe. Can they get a kill here? They're getting close. But she hops away. Bambi on the way back out. There's another tether. There's a lot of damage coming from Lulnara again as she's using the Splinter Spear too, but Muradin is already suffering. And Leo has 60 gems. I mean, they hold 88 gems now. Leo has 60. And Dren is doing a great job throughout this game, uh, staying alive. I uh, gotta give him credit for that. He hasn't died once. Now, of course, you could argue that he is absolutely not using his trait here and not getting any value out of it. But I think in this case, they're totally fine with that. Because, yeah. First of all, it was a dumb, uh, pretty stupid joke anyways. But second of all, with all the gems that he's holding, not bad, my friend. So yeah, Leo is currently main tanking this, more or less. 62,000 damage by Lunara now. Hansa is at 77. And, yep, here we go. There's the Dragon Mirrored in. The disc in the back on Tychus. Lulnado again to save the day for them. But where's that sound barrier? Sound barrier not used yet. Even with the Entomb coming out, they're not really afraid of them. Tychus has already popped his Odin. And there's such a small gap in experience to level 20. Praise the sun going real deep now for that damage output. The turn in hasn't happened yet. Dren is trying it again. Lucio with the interrupt. Good for them, but I think eventually this one is coming through. Blue team is, of course, hoping to get Storm Talon so that they can take the fight. But there's the Web Weaver Wave. Successful moves by the Aging Curve. Now they gotta stay alive, though. Arrow, far gone. Fight in the meantime. Turns on Muradin, and he is dead. The level 20 is in. There's the disc on Tychus. Uh-oh, this is bad news. Tychus is down. 20 to 18, 9 kills, 2 7. Leo at the bottom of the map had to move in since the keep was taking even more damage. And now they can go for an easy defense here. Now they take away the mid Weaver first. The Haga will solo deal with this one at the top left. No problem for him, honestly. We got 90,000 hero damage for Hanzo. He's working on the six digits. And with two heroes down on the red team side, the blue team moves in to drop the keep. Not even caring about the web weaver at the bottom. Minion wave? Nah. Don't need it. Let's go. Take that down. They drop it. And that's catapult pressure on the lane. And a lot of it, of course. So, yeah. They're going to get massive value out of this. Same time, we got the move into the mid lane. And the gem count for them should easily allow... I mean, they could go boss too. So, they have a lot of, pos of a potential plays here. We have them with nearly enough gems to get another turn in. They are missing 10, but they have still some camps to clear. We have also, of course, that level 20 talent gives them an advantage, so they could attempt to force a fight around the top lane. That is a nice position where if you start to just simply set up here and threaten to take boss, the red team will have to move in and start to position around it. And then the bot lane is getting pushed hard because there's a catapult on every single wave now and they have no counter pressure. So this is gonna really threaten the core. That's if you want to play the long game and you can even have the Haka at the bot lane too. My F is already moving away and yeah, they are making exactly that play right now. So they're going for the boss. Hanzo can help with that. And look at my F. Keeping vision on them and occupying them a bit. And as they're moving in, I think they're going to be too late here. They should be. Muradin is going to try and jump. Gets pushed out. Boss is taken. And here comes the fight. And Muradin is immediately in trouble. Muradin is low. He's really low. And he goes down first. Muradin falls. They go for Tigers in the back. Really threaten Aryan Rod here. And even with Odin, he doesn't stand a chance. Lulnara is dead. Bambi is as dead as his mother. 
And they also go for Degard Kane. The arrow hits him hard into the face. He gets snowballed even more. The lol is there. Was that needed? Of course not. But it was funny. So now they have four kills and they have a straight shot at the core. Only Leo is alive. Hasn't activated his trade in the entire game, if I'm not mistaken. He's the only one on the red team side that hasn't died yet. And that's going to change now too. What a performance in this series by Team Cat. Uh, they went ham in the semi-final too. They were nearly able to make it to the grand final, but just barely missed out on it. Here, on the other hand, they are the dominating force, at least for now. 14 kills to 2, and that's a 2-0 lead in the best of 5 for the blue team. Nicely done. GG, and well played as the blue team locks in the victory on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Game number three could be the final map of the series. I gotta say that Team Cat is pretty dominant here. I mean, again, they nearly made it to the grand final, and it just feels that the aging curve is a little bit outclassed in a lot of these fights. So it's a pretty solid performance by Team Cat, and kudos to them. It's gonna be an uphill battle from here on out for the red team because they are facing off against three potential match points, so they need to go for the reverse sweep in order to make this work, and that is not gonna be easy. I personally like that we get Cursed Hollow as the map. <laughs> I absolutely love Cursed Hollow. And yeah, we'll see how this is going to go for now. Yeah, because right now we got Falstead banned out. Mm-hmm. And with that, we also have the Stukov bands. So, yep, here we go. Yeah, good stuff. So, we have already the Stukov ban immediately. So, now that begs the question, are they going to go and ban out Malfurion too? And with Falstead being banned, you eliminated one of the globals. That gives even more of a preference towards the Haka, which could be taken very easily. So, yep, the Haka is banned out therefore which leaves Malfurion up so that's the choice that you have to make in that situation and they want to deny both of the globals and yep there comes the Vala pick this is the first time literally that Vala made it through the draft in 12 13 games so kind of crazy pretty crazy actually to uh, see that Vala makes it into the draft once every dozen games or so and now we'll see if they can deliver with Vala again it seems like Team Cat was absolutely willing to let her through. So they banned the Haka instead and just said, well, take Vala, we don't care. But can Aging Curve now deliver with her? That's, of course, the question. Lucio's in, Hogga as well. And that gives them a lot of fast rotations. Hogga can go for the camps too. Yeah, kind of like what they are starting off with, but uh, that Vala pick is obviously a really interesting one considering that she is banned this much in Korea. So this is going to be the first time they're going to see her in action, but the confidence on the side of Team Cat is pretty, pretty strong. So, yeah, they are going to have... I mean, again, they're going to have a strategy ready to deal with Vala. If they let her through, if they don't ban her for the first time, they're just saying, yeah, we're going we can deal with this. We can absolutely deal with that. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so we got Sonya also banned out. Yeah, Diablo and Sonya would definitely be a big one. But they can ban the main tank now too. Like this is a map where in Europe we would at least see some kind of place towards, let's say, Playing Vikings, playing maybe Abatha, those heroes would be banned. But yeah, we'll see what's going to happen with that. Now, right now, Zeratul is banned. That already makes me a bit sad because obviously they want to protect Vala. But I would have loved to see a decent Zeratul come through here and just wreck that backline. Good Zeratul players are always a blast to observe. We had a few, especially on uh, Towers of Doom in the semifinals. It was quite interesting. But the double pick is now coming in and they still need their range damage of course but more importantly I want to see what the front line is going to look like for them here. They have to go up against Diablo, we could see Greyman again for example, would be good for the camps, would also be good to deal with Dibbles maybe. Is still an option for Panagorm here towards the end but Genji is in play for a hero that means he can jump into the back line and try and pressure Vala and Malfurion. But there's still no side laner for Aging Curve and there's a couple of options, you could go Urel, you could go into Blaze. 
Mal fail, maybe not necessarily against this setup right now. But yeah, both of the foremost mentioned would be really good for them here too. Uh, ooh, double support. Here's the URL pick that I just mentioned, but they go in with a double support. Double frontline, double support Vala. Really just putting all their eggs in one basket and saying Vala has to survive and she is going to murder everyone. And here comes the Illidan pick. Nice. Feel the hatred of 10,000 Hero League games. Let's go, everybody. We've got an Illidan in our game. Cursed Hollow is the map. Map number three. Can they go for the 3-0 victory or is Aging Curve bringing it back now on Cursed Hollow? Game number three, Cat with a 2-0 lead, and of course, they go for full aggression here. Hero playing Genji and Vasto and Illidan. Both of them going to try and dive into the back line to put pressure on Vala. We got Panagom on Murden, Apian on Hoga, and Red Pepper on Lucio. But here he is, Praise the Sun, supported by two frontliners, by Brother on Diablo and Aaron Rod on Urel, plus two supports to boot, Dren on Uther and Academy on Malfurion. There's a lot of CC that they're running here. Cleansers, tons of protection, displacement from Urel that can be used to keep Vala alive. And Praise the Sun, he needs to pop off here. Goes into an arrow build. And of course, as the game continues, we have a lot of scaling on the blue team too. But there's the immediate attack on Lucio. And he dies. The final hit is taking him down. The brawl in the middle as Illidan jumps out. And Illidan in the early game is usually not really a big threat to anybody. Yeah, obviously, if you can get your kills, that's great for him. But what you're trying to do is get him into the mid and late game. Open up the map a bit by taking down the opponent's forts so that he has a lot more room to play with. If he can chase, then Illidan is happy and extremely dangerous. There's pretty much two ways on how you can play with Illidan. You can either focus on trying to take structures down. That's one approach. And the other one is to simply go and chase targets down. For that, of course, you want to have a little bit more space than just this small distance here on the stream. So you want to make sure that those walls are opened up. And with Illidan and Hogger, Team Cat also has two heroes that can easily take these camps now. So mid and late game are going to be very, very interesting from the perspective of the blue team. When we're talking about the aging curve, on the other hand, it will be quite the Vala show here. So yeah, she's the one who needs to bring all the damage later on. Aging Curve, in case you missed the semi-finals, is apparently a team of players that are all older than 30 years, and they are hence the team name. So they were trying to meme that a little bit. Top sides, we got Pandagom and Dren in. And down here, yep, here comes the move straight in for the mid lane pressure against the first wall. Vala is still going for the camp, but has to abandon that even after taking one of the Siege Giants down to help out here in the middle. Muradin is also adjusting his build with a reverberation as a level 4 talent, so we're not going to see the healing static combo on level 13. The Dragon Claw kicking in. And Illidan in the meantime has not made a choice on level 4 yet, but is still holding towards the top lane. So he can start take those structures down. And I already told you earlier, if Illidan is able to take structures and stay on them, then he is going to rip them apart. Hogga gets killed, so that's a bit unfortunate, but Illidan just obliterated the first tower, and he's already working on the next one right here. Vala is heading over, Lucio gets attacked, and this is starting to become a bit of a problem. The blue team is losing too many heroes. Now, Illidan has done a great job up at the top opening this up. But with three kills already against Team Cat, they are struggling even before we're heading into the mid game. Heroes at the bottom of the map dealing with those waves as well as the first objective is now being announced. And Illidan still sitting topside. He's probably going to side lane a fair amount here. And of course the big question is still, are we going to see Hunt or are we going to see Metamorphosis? I honestly don't really know what the meta currently is for Illidan in Korea. Even here he doesn't get played a whole lot. If you want to play the macro game a bit more, then Hunt of course can be nice because it gives it a global. If you're a bit afraid of all of that CC on the other side and you want to play it safe in the team fights, then Metamorphosis is just a way better talent. But it depends on what kind of play style they want to use in that mid and late game. Vala is very, very low here, but Hoga just doesn't stand a chance to get the final few kills in, or the hits in. Pepper! <laughs> Makes it out of the fight, and they even got the tribute, but they're still fighting. Like, moving away from that position might be the better play, and yes, they're all rushing out. Everybody is already low. We got level 7 kicking in for the red team just a bit faster, but it doesn't help them since the tribute has already been taken. Now we get the repeating arrow on level 4 and now the frost shot on level 7 for Vala. 
So after the initial stacks come in for the puncturing arrow, it's gonna focus on those resets a lot. By now we get top side Genji plus Illidan. And Genji with the augmented guard on level 7, Illidan with the friend of 4 for added mobility in team fights. But yep, they are st going straight for Belder here. And Hyde pausing the game. So apparently still some issues. We had an earlier uh, pause already as the game started. And apparently the problem was that they had Discord issues. So they needed to fix their voice communication before they could continue the game. Might be that we're looking at a similar problem here right now. But the situation in game is still that we have nearly even experience. And the next tribute is now spawning. Slightly better position, honestly, for the aging curve. So they could uh, definitely lock in the first tribute. But as I said, they would like to snowball the game a bit in the early game. And as the game continues, Illidan should have more of an impact of what's going on here. Because it becomes harder and harder to kill and can just do way more damage and work through the distances. Just chase them down. So that's something that we're definitely going to keep an eye on. But from the perspective of Aging Curve, this tribute, I mean, it's kind of must-have. Because if you don't take it, then you are forced to make the play on the third one. If you take this one, then you have options. Depending on the situation around level 10, where bosses are at and so on and so forth, you can decide to let one slide. But you are heavily under pressure if you lose both of the initial tributes. So that's definitely something to keep in mind here, as we're still waiting for them to fix the issues in voice so that we can resume the game. Hogger successfully reconnecting into the game. And that continues the party up at the top where Diablo might be in trouble because Illidan is already deciding whether he wants to go for the fort or for the hero. The tribute at the bottom has spawned. Vasta has to jump out and Dibbles is doing his best to keep that lane alive. But look at Lucio behind enemy lines just zipping from left to right. But he overstays for just a second and gets rooted by Malfurion. Not really a big problem for them though. They're chasing Genji down, but keeping Illidan... I mean, leaving him alone at the top is definitely a mistake. Uther is moving in and trying to stun him out, but that's going to be tricky no matter what. So there's the interrupt again, but Muradin might just have screwed up. And yeah, that's a kill on the front line. Nice wall stun by Diablo. Illidan therefore doesn't have enough time to take the fort down, and the tribute gets taken by Aging Curve, as we already predicted a bit earlier. It's going to be interesting to see what the level 10 abilities are going to be because there's a lot of... Oh, there's another one. Yeah, they're getting murdered right now. There's way too many kills, especially against Lucio, and I really think that a lot of the kills that we saw in the early game were avoidable. So, Team Cat is not really playing as disciplined here as they did in the previous two games. Now, to give some credit to Aging Curve, they have very good CC. Their draft is working out nicely, and look at this, they're even going for the Divine Storm now. So they're playing their cards correctly. Here also is the Reign of Vengeance for even more stun. The CC train that we're going to get from them is incredible. But yep, yeah, there's another potential kill. A little bit late on that ult. But there's still no level 10 ability for Team Cat. So Muradin just doesn't stand a chance. Gets murder, that's 7 kills to 0. And at the pace this is going, we're looking at a potential stomp. Team Aging Curve is starting to take another tribute. Bosses are now up too. Level 10 abilities are a huge game changer, but you can already tell that Lucio is nearly dead. And some interrupts are definitely coming in. But with all of the CC that is being utilized by Aging Curve, they are just getting farther and farther ahead here by getting kill after kill in those team fights. And they make an immediate move now for boss at the top too. Vala obviously can help to chunk this down quickly with the double arrow. We have Metamorphosis for Illidan. And we have Haymaker! What? They're going full Haymaker on this one. Trying to go for some isolation, I suppose. Yeah, boss is already sniffed out, so they know what's going on. Everybody's moving top. Urel isn't here, by the way. So here comes the hit. Vala, they could try and attack her. Big hits against Illidan. The CC is too much, but Vala is down. Vala is down. Boss is taken. They get the boss, but they could lose the fight now. Malfurion is about to die. Genji zips in. Urel has finally arrived in the battle, but Uther is about to fall. The Stormbolt connects. Both of the supports are gone. And now the rest of the team should die too. At least Diablo should bite the dust. Urel might be able to make her way out of the battle. But this is four kills now for Team Cat. 
They lost the boss and they lost Illidan, but they killed four heroes. And that brings them back a little bit. Another tribute has just spawned and the blue team has to fight for it since we have two tributes for the red team already. But that was a much better team fight for them now as previously. With a little caveat, of course, that Ural was a bit late to the party. But the combo against uh, Illidan in particular was pretty incredible. It just showcases how dangerous all of that CC is here. So this battle is going to decide a lot. Is there a curse against Team Cat? Yes or no? Genji gets attacked, zips out, the double support is back to business. Really tricky to take the backline out, but Uta is in trouble and in a lot of trouble at that. Uta has a real problem at his hands and that's not the only one. Look at Vala. Vala is about to go down, she's dead. Lucy comes in with the final few hits, his metamorphosis gets used by Illidan. They go for the Uta kill and they get him too. Illidan driving the fight now and Muradin is jumping in together with him. Genji always hoping for that final hit with the swift strike and the reset. Haymaker gets used against Urel. They get the level 13 talents. And here is the tribute capture by Illidan himself. Bronze Beard Rage on 13. The elusive strike for Illidan. Six kills to eight. And now the blue team has taken the lead in experience again. Nicely done. Big focus on Vala in all these fights now. And the supports are already under enormous pressure once the battle starts. Siphoning arrows have now been taken. The well met is coming in too. Divine Storm, of course, a huge part of the combo that is being used in these battles by Utha now. And it's all a question of whether or not you can sustain yourself through the initial fight or not. A good sound barrier, for example, could really ruin the team fight for Aging Curve. If Lucio is able to get a good timing on these and keep everyone alive through the Divine Storm and those stun comps, then it would be an incredibly difficult battle for the red team. And well, here we're seeing a bit more of that. Stuns are already coming out. Big stun! And the sound barrier is perfect. It's absolutely perfect, but the follow-up stun on Illidan is a bit too much for him to handle. Didn't you this is his metamorphosis here. They get the counter kill against Malfurion, but everybody's low. And Genji gets out and Vala dies. Oh god. These team fights are starting to fall apart hard on the side of Aging Curve. Nine kills early on in the game, but now the 5v5 battles are turning against them. We have another one getting dropped. Uther is down. The boss is wreaking havoc, and they are chasing them. They are chasing them deep into enemy territory as Brother is getting stunned on his Diablo. He is trying to get out here. The fort is obviously going to get dropped, and now we are on level 15 for Team Cat. Yeah, they are playing a much better team fight now than they did previously. It felt honestly that in the early game, they were a little bit trolling there too. Maybe not trolling necessarily, but definitely taking things a bit too easy. Not showing that that cautious diligence that they had in previous games where they made sure that nobody was out of position and there was no chance to gank them. They lost way too many heroes on these rotational plays from Aging Curve. Uh, but now they are looking way better in those team fights. The coordination and communication is on point. 42,000 for Hogga, and of course that curse is just murdering them. Down at the bottom of the map, the entire keep is already opened up. They're moving into the middle to take another fort down. The one at the top lane has fallen, and there is a big minion wave now trying to take that wall down as the fight rages on in the middle. Another stun. These sound barriers are absolutely perfect, but again, Muradin dies. Lucio does his best to keep everybody alive, makes all the right moves, but still the kill against Muradin. They get the fort, and the top lane is now pushing straight in for the keep. And the keep might not fall, well, actually, they're losing the one at the bot lane. One keep is down, and this keep is also suffering a lot of damage. Urel is able to save it, but it doesn't change the fact that it's down to 50% HP and eventually will be pressured by Team Cat. So an enormous advantage now for the blue team after initially in the game, they suffered a lot of losses, but now that curse combined with the kills that they got put Team Cat into the driver's seat once again. They won that 3-0. They want to make sure that they take third place in the Fish Cup in our Korean tournament. 30 stacks for Vala. She now also has Manticore on level 16. And of course the blue team, uh, they are trying to uh, increase their advantage a little bit more. Dominate the map even further. 
Whereas for aging curve, it's pretty important to try and establish a bit of a foothold at this point. The boss at the top is about to be taken again, and everybody is trying to fight in for it, with the exception of Ural, who's not here. So there is a little bit of a time window that can be used by Team Cat. They are going to have the big team fight on the point though. Mid lane gets pressured by a camp, so another keep is in trouble. Diablo is moving in, and here's the attempt to go for the boss. Everybody is jumping in. Hildan is the only one on the point, but Vala is down once again. There's the big boss steal, but at the same time, the sound barrier was so good. Metamorphosis is getting used as the fight is just raging on. Benediction used by Uthas. He's looking for the second stun. The backline in trouble, and there's the wall stand on Illidan. Illidan, they are still killing Uthas. Illidan is alive gets pushed back again <laughs> he's still alive he gets the kill on diablo fucking ill than murdering everything full on wipe five man team wipe diablo is back since he did have his soul the boss at the top is doing some damage but of course the keep is now getting attacked and so is the core they're trying to end the game here what a team fight victory illidan several times just with a slither of health and now he is Wrecking the core together with the rest of the team. Team Cat looking for the 3-0 victory. Vala is back. No protection for her. The core down to 30. Down to 20. This has to be game. Genji is down, but it's not enough. A 3-0 victory. A clean win for Team Cat as they secure themselves the third place in the Korean tournament. GG and well played. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.